So in my next series, this project was is actually a gift. It's going to my sister. It is a little bit of a ways past her birthday, but that is unfortunately kind of um, the double-edged sword with handmade presents. They take a lot longer than, than um, just buying something from the store. Luckily, she is super patient and very chill, so she doesn't mind that um, it's it's a little late, but I'm planning on installing this tomorrow. So I'm filming the intros now because I don't want to film um, on site at her house. And um, this is basically a lending library. Some people call them a pull station or um, a book box. So the basic gist of it is, and my, my local library has, has done an initiative to put a bunch of these around town and people love them. They're really cool. You, you fill them with books and then someone will come and take one and you could also leave books as well. It's not a requirement to leave a book, but, um, and then the book is yours. I haven't seen ones yet. I know they're called, some of them are called lending libraries, but I haven't seen one yet where it's a requirement to bring the book back. I imagine that wouldn't be uh, wildly successful anyway. But um, I knew she wanted one of these. I usually, like I said, because handmade presents take so long, I don't wanna feel like I'm imposing on people by always making them stuff. I really only make stuff for people if I know it's something they either really want or have asked for. So I knew she had wanted one of these. The ones that are manufactured by the, the company with the trademark are, are a little expensive for what they are, to be perfectly honest. And they're, they're not super big, so you can't fit a lot of materials in there. So a lot of people make their own. They get pretty creative with it. So the, the paint scheme design for this was, was Dr. Seuss. So you could kind of understand where, where all these crazy colors are coming from. I know the paint scheme is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but honestly, I usually am painting things white or off-white, which gets kind of monotonous and mundane. So it was nice to, even though it takes a lot longer to paint something with all these different colors, especially since um, as soon as I open a can of paint, it's, it's a given that the, the weather uh, temperature will drop and then everything takes much longer to dry. But I was pretty happy with how it turned out. And like I said, I'm installing it tomorrow. So I don't want to film on site, but I will try and take a couple pictures of it sunken into the ground. But that's basically basically the gist of it. It's going to be a two-part series. I might reuse the same intro for the second one because it's, it's pretty straightforward and bare bones. So I prefer to work intuitively with most things. So I kind of had a rough idea of what I wanted this to look like. And then I went from there. I knew I wanted the inside to have a Lazy Susan so it would be easier to view the books. And then that kind of led to having um, an octagonal shape on the outside. So I started by drawing out, you could see I found centers on this piece of paper. Um, I drew a circle with those centers and then I started laying out the sides. So right now I'm just pointing out the fact that I wanna put lap joints on these to get that shape and um, the reasoning for this, I overbuilt, I'm an overbuilder in general, but I really overbuilt this because I knew it was going to be outside and where it's going at my sister's house, it's, it's kind of full sun. So that's gonna do a number on this project. So I definitely wanted to put laps on the bottom and the top, especially with rain, it will just be the sturdiest uh, construction method. So I'm just lining up that an angle using uh, a bevel could see I could get the same angle onto my table saw and then I could cut a scrap piece of ply and I could transfer that to the rate alarm saw in order to to cut this so there's this is a pretty involved construction in this piece um, on pieces like this I like to play around with techniques and design because usually I'm making stuff for customers and it's pretty strict um, strict measurements and strict design so it's always nice to make something um, from my own head so obviously this is probably not geared towards DIYers especially people without any sort of tools but I thought it would be a fun video to post because I like the end product and um, I'm sure it could kind of stimulate ideals in other people even if you don't have these tools or a skill set for making something like this but basically I'm going through and you can see with my jigs that I have set up, I have a stop on two ends. So I'm cutting the exact same laps in all of my pieces. I could trim out those curves 
and then um, like I said I have those laps so I'm making two of these one for the bottom and one for the top and that's how they fit together so then I could switch everything to the other side um, recreate the this jig in order to cut the laps on the other edge now you could see I'm leaving some space on the edge and I'm doing that because like I said I do like to work intuitively I didn't have a finalized plan so I thought those might come in handy um, whenever I do that I could try and plan ahead I end up not needing it which you'll see in the video I end up cutting all of those pieces off whenever I don't plan ahead like that I wish I had so it wasn't a huge deal to leave those on there but I do end up not using those those little parts sticking out but now that everything's there I could glue everything together so the width of this was enough kind of I used a, a basic width for for books and obviously the lazy Susan's fitting inside same thing with the height I wanted it to be a certain height just so that most books will fit inside the box so then I ended up deciding to glue these two pieces together with dowels. These are 5 8 inch dowels. You can see um, I just drilled some holes in there. I'd, I'd had them tacked together and drilled through both pieces at once. And that's how I attached the two. I also end up changing that. So then I roughed out a design. What I decided to do for in between the dowels is make these kind of curved arches that you could see through into the box. So I did some rough math. Um, these angles ended up being a little off and I, I modified them but you can kind of see the the shape of the arch and the angles I was expecting to cut in order to create that arch so I just registered once again the bevel gauge off of these angles and cut all of my pieces um, you can see I have a stop set up my bevel gauge set up and you can see I'm using that angle to transfer it like I said it ended up being a little bit off but it was a good starting point so I cut a couple realized they weren't perfect and then and then modified it a little bit but you could see how I'm using that stop to cut those angles so these were the originals and like I said they were just slightly off because I, I don't think I calculated the thickness properly but it was close enough you could see it's a little too wide the angles were nice but it, it's because I you could see the thickness of the lumber is a little different so then I cut them a little bit smaller and it was a little too small so I just decided to put a spacer in the middle and then it worked out perfectly so then those were the angles I made and it's um, I believe with the front opening I had six six of these to make and then I just cut slats for the bottom and then a spacer at the bottom because I'm going to glue these with rubber bands so then this whole thing can be glued together I ended up making seven because I calculated wrong which wasn't a huge deal but I only needed six so I could go through and just glue all of my pieces together and let them set up overnight glue the bottoms and then rubber bands are great for stuff like this to hold everything together you can see that space from the bottom is so, so solely just so that those two bottom pieces don't don't bow in and then that's what those look like so there's my stack and then the angles were pretty good but I ended up sanding these the next day just to curve them just to smooth them out a little bit so you can see how they're gonna fit in the opening so then this is just smoothing out those edges because at this point I still hadn't decided what I was gonna sheathe um, the sides with. I liked the ideal of these arches but I didn't know what I was going to put around them at this point so I wanted it to be smooth so whatever was butting up against them um, I wouldn't have to do a lot of compound angle work and then just cleaning up the inside so I was really happy with how these these turned out so there's my stack you can see those are the ones that aren't done they're close but not perfect so then in order to attach these um, I decided I wanted them to tilt out a little bit instead of being flat so I'm just using a small poplar spacer to draw an angle for that tilt and then I could cut these um, cut through that angle with my miter gauge set to the exact same angle and then they'll have a tilt to them 
So like I said, most of these decisions are being made as I go. I just enjoy working that way, putting things in place. And then, um, and then obviously the tilt on the other side has to be cut on the other side of the tail saw. And seeing, <clears throat> and then seeing how things work. The one problem I will say to working this way is at the end of the day, it does take a little bit longer because you sometimes fix mistakes for things you hadn't planned for. And um, if I was to make something like this again, uh, there's definitely some modifications I would have made and I could make it faster, but you could probably say that about most things. So you could see now how they fit in there at a little bit of a tilt which I liked better than just straight on. And then I'll just screw these to the inside of that, that ledger board. So you can see the screws there. I'm just tacking these in place because these are going to be, have to keep coming in and out. And then I numbered them all so I know they would go in the exact same spots even though this is pretty, pretty symmetrical. So then I decided I have this wooden lath. You can get this stuff at Home Depot in a, bum, in a bundle. Um, it's kind of cool stuff. It's, it's similar to what they have in, it's exactly what they have in older houses that they used to put plaster over. I'm assuming they sell it for people that do restorative work, but it's not used in houses today. And then I got that angle off the lath. At this point, these I realized these dowels weren't gonna work. And I, in order to have this lath fit on the sides, I was going to have to have an angled piece of trim instead of the dowels. So like I said, this is one of the downsides to working intuitively. I didn't know I was gonna put lath on the outside, so now I have to go back and, and fix those changes. But I just had the, the, the angles cut from the, the marks I had on the piece, and you could see that now when this lath sits against those angled pieces, I could attach it versus not being able to attach it to the dowels. So this is just oak cutoffs. I was actually building that reclaimed, not reclaimed, the reclaimed looked oak table at this point, and these were just cutoffs from the tabletop, and I used those to, to make those pieces. So I'm now just going to go through, cut out the dowels, and then attach these in their spots. Now I didn't really show this, but you could see that the opening for the book box is, is wider, and it's not, um, at the same same angle as the other pieces it's that part in the front so that's why i ended up with only six openings because i may i pretty much got rid of two of those openings for the door so i'm just going to go through and attach these oak pieces and then for the wooden lath all i did was go through and cut these and then i i cheated them on top of each other to give them a look of of almost vinyl siding and i'm just gluing them all in place this was really easy now the problem with this design is i'm cutting out a huge portion of this material in order to put those those windows in but it was easier to just, instead of having the windows in place and cutting little pieces to go around it, I thought it would be much easier to just skin the entire thing and then go back and cut through it. So that's the sides skinned out. Now this is the first one I did and I rushed this, I did it the same day because I, I didn't let the glue set up. I could be a little impatient. And I only lost one little siding piece, which I was surprised about. So what I did was I caulked the inside of this siding so it would be a little sturdier. I let it set up overnight and then I came in and cut the rest of these and it ended up working out really well. So I fixed that part, which is what I'm pointing out with the pencil. And then this piece can, um, I show you that one and I'm gonna show you how I cut the third one. I just butt this up against that, that lath siding, tilt it back because that's the correct angle is, was it tilted back and then I drill some pilot holes for the jigsaw and then I'm cutting this out with a jigsaw. So there's the jigsaw that I'm cutting. And with that glued in place, the glue set up and with that caulking set up, I didn't have any more uh, tear out of those pieces. So then I cut these a little undersized because I want them to be a nice tight fit. Water is going to be an issue for this uh, situation. I didn't want to have to fill a ton of gaps with caulk or anything like that. At this point, I also still didn't know if I was going to be painting it or not. And I didn't want there to be a, a ton of unsightly gaps with caulk filling if it was going to be left natural. 
So then I'm just using a Dremel in order to go around and get a really nice tight fit. Okay, see, I actually have to hammer it in place. And then I just do that to all of those. And then at this point, this bottom portion is, is pretty much flushed out. That's, that's what it's going to look like um, at the end of the day. So then because that door opening is bigger than the, the, the sides with the windows, there's a little weird, weird cubby spot. So I took some of the cutoffs from the other pieces and I was able to just tack them on place. Um, from the inside and then you'll see I could tack um, from the outside and then I could also tack them into the door opening from the inside so that's kind of how I finished off the edges so to start the the rafters I kind of roughed out a shape I wanted and then I had um, some scrap these are two by sixes I forget which project these are from but they're, they're scrap and I rip them down to size. Like I said, I don't have measurements for any of this sort of stuff. I was working, these are the scrap I had, so that kind of designated the width and the size. Those look to be about two and a half inches. And then I could go through with a jigsaw and then rough cut out all of that pattern. Then because I rough cut these with a jigsaw, I just clamp them all together and I could clean them up with a shaping disc on my angle grinder and get them all to be the exact same size. You see I just clean them up and then use uh, the power sander to finish cleaning them up and then in the next video I'm going to show you the the next video will start with with building the roof.